Today on the Travel Magazine, we visit three Mediterranean port cities, popular destinations for modern-day tourists, and fascinating portals to Greek and Turkey's history. Join us as we explore the ancient ruins of Knossos Palace, the stunning seaside resort of Kusadasi, Turkey, and Heraklion, the bustling capital of Crete. The landmass protruding into the eastern Mediterranean from Turkey was called once upon a time Asia Minor. The ancient port city of Ephesus was founded here about 3,000 years ago. Silting caused the port to move to Kusadasi, which is now a famous seaside resort with beautiful beaches and tree-lined boulevards. Hi, I'm Jake de Boer. And I'm Mika de Boer. Welcome to the ancient city of Ephesus and to the resort area of Kusadasi. Kusadasi is situated on the west coast of Turkey, 90 kilometers south of Izmir on the Aegean Sea. In English, Kusadasi means bird island. The city borrowed its name from an outlying isle that was part of a migratory route. These days, it's tourists who flock by the thousands to the seaside resort, and who can blame them? It's gorgeous sandy beaches and proximity to several important historical sites, including Ephesus, make Kusadasi one of Turkey's principal vacation destinations. With 50,000 residents, 99% of whom are Turkeys, the holiday hotspots population swells during tourist season, and many of the locals are able to make a living from tourism industries, including traditional artisan crafts. Traditional Turkish carpets, weaving and needlework are popular souvenirs. There is a wide range of goods available in the market. Some items slightly less practical than others. Yes, I am a doctor. Sure. You're a doctor? Yes, doctor. Hospital. Hospital. Ah. Yeah. Hospital. It's, it's cool. Hospital. It's... Shoes doctor. Just look, just look, just look. Camera, camera. Here, here. Oh, Only but, but I don't want the shoe like this. Yeah. This is not a good doctor. Uh, I am what? doctor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Like How many years? How many years were you a doctor? Uh, 20 years. 20 years you're a yes. doctor? Doctor, shoe doctor. Shoe doctor. Well, my feet is very tired and my shoes need to be fixed. Bak şimdi. Finished? Çok acele edersen eline çak batırırsın. Oh, yeah. you mean it otherwise it will get loose again? Yeah. Hadi bakalım. Çok haber yapacağım. Thank you yes. very, very much. Onu fırsatayım dur. Okay. Oh, that's my toes. My toes. My feet. You make, you make my feet clean. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you very much. I'm going to shop now. Okay. With a good pair of footwear, you can literally shop until you drop in Kusudasi. Local artisans have many talents and display their handcrafted wares alongside vendors flouting more modern fare. When your feet need a break, you'll likely be tempted to order a snack at one of the many cafes in the market. Once you've recovered from shopping, you may wish to take in some of Kusadasi's mosques, which provide excellent examples of Ottoman and Turkish architecture. A pleasant 20-kilometer drive from Kusadasi, Ephesus was once an important port city that housed the Temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Its ruins are magnificent, but far too expansive to be viewed on an empty stomach. Fortunately, it's snack time again. Get ready for some more Turkish delight as we sample from an authentic roadside cafe. 
happy I don't have to make this. No, I mean, you could be doing that at home too, instead of being in Kusadasi, Kusadashi in Ephesus. But you know what is amazing? Is that we are halfway between Kusadashi and Ephesus, and you know, there's an old roadside stand. You can have your Turkish coffee. They make bread early in the morning for the locals, for tourists. And um, are we gonna taste it? No, oh, it looks really, very good. Really you know, nice. I would like to give it a try and see what it's like. That is good. Very you know good. that? Thank you very much. Thank you. Excellent. When we return, we arrive at Ephesus to explore the wondrous ruins at the Temple of Artemis. and following Cleopatra's footsteps along ancient Harbor Street. Then, we head to Iraklion, the capital of Crete. And finally, we venture to the palace ruins of Knossos. We will be back with more of the Travel Magazine just after this, so stay with us. Welcome back to Travel Magazine 2000 as we continue our trek from the lovely resort area of Kusadasi to the awesome ruins of Ephesus. Ephesus is 10 kilometers from the Aegean Sea, just 20 kilometers northeast of Kusadasi. This is all that remains of one of the seven wonders of the ancient world the Temple of Artemis. The source of the Artemis cult can be traced back to the mother goddess of Anatolia, and the temple built in her honor was first completed in the 6th century BC. In 356 BC, it was burned to the ground by an arsonist the same night that Alexander the Great was born. The rebuilt temple was torn down and pillaged towards the end of the third century. And sadly, all that marks the site today is a ditch, a few pieces of marble, and this single column. Tell me, what is Ephesus? Ephesus is the biggest ancient port, harbor of Anatolia for the exportation uh, to Europe. And uh, we are now on the Marble Avenue. On this avenue walked from Christianity, Virgin Mary. The Virgin Mary. Mother of Jesus. Mary Magdalena. Saint John the Evangelist. Saint Paul. If we go back in the history, Socrates. Let me think. Uh, uh, all the ancient Greek philosophers walked on this avenue on which we are now walking. It is not difficult to imagine oneself living in the past while exploring the more than two dozen significant landmarks at Ephesus. In the traditional Roman style, the various baths include an undressing room, a cold room, a lukewarm room, a hot room, a sweating room, and a reading room. Nearby, rows of columns mark the State Agora and the Basilica, a central meeting place that served as a trade center for merchants, bankers, and the local clientele during the Roman Empire. From the Basilica, a short walk to the east brings us to a small theater known as the Odium or Bulletarium. Built in the second century, members of city council sometimes met here to discuss the future of Ephesus. And because there is no drainage system on the stage, there is speculation that the theater was once covered by a wooden roof. We 
and now we are walking on a marble avenue where we see a uh, horse tracks or uh, the chariot. Uh, chariot tracks, uh, uh, the, the deepest ones in Ephesus. Uh, Are these actually the chariot the cherries, tracks yes, from yes, 2,000 yes, years? 2,000 years. 2, years. More, years even ago. more than 2,000 years. More than 2,000 years under which there is a sewage system, canalization system. Large, two meters deep, six meters long, two kilometers. At the Palace of the Council, a sacred fire tended by Artemisian priestesses was always kept burning. The stately Doric pillars are inscribed with the names of the priests of the Roman Empire. This memorial was erected on Domitian Square during the first century in honor of Memmius, grandson of the dictator Sulla. This temple was the first to be built in the name of an emperor of Ephesus and featured shops and warehouses on the ground floor. This gate is decorated with reliefs of Heracles from the second century and leads to the Trajan Fountain. It is written Traiano, Caesarea, Sto Sevasto. Germanico, Dacico. I translate. Roman Emperor Trojan Tra uh, Traiano, who became Caesar, who has been victorious at the battle at Dacico on the Germans. Dacico in uh, Dacia today, in Romania. The public fountain dedicated to his victory. Uh, which was built between the years 102 114 AD by a rich family uh, with its name Aristion. Along with the inscriptions, a dozen large statues were discovered here, but only Trajan's foot remains on site. This impressive fountain was built in the first century. It boasts two stories and stands 12 meters high. The Temple of Hadrian was also built in honor of a Roman emperor. It features a stone relief of Medusa, with her hair of snakes, complemented on either side by a series of phrases depicting the establishment of the city of Ephesus. The son of Tiberius Julius Celsus, governor general of the province of Asia, had this library built on top of his father's tomb. Four statues representing knowledge, virtue, wisdom, and justice still stand proud. Inscriptions and reliefs decorate the ornate facade of this ancient building, which once housed 12,000 scrolls. Just across from the library at the north end of Marble Road, you can visit the remains of a brothel. The house was dedicated to Venus. It had a bathing pool with two levels and was geared toward cleanliness. The floors of several rooms surrounding the atrium are decorated with mosaics, and it is thought that guests were entertained here prior to heading upstairs. Jake, on this famous street, Cleopatra walked how many years ago? Well, Mark Anthony and Cleopatra tied the ship up at the end of this street. They were on their way, in fact, from Tarsus to Rome. It was in the year 42 BC, and they came in in the evening. It was early in the evening, but it was getting dark already. And this is one of the few streets that was lit by the people of Ephesus, and they were, of course, waving at them because they were very special people. And they were actually only here for one day. And one night, that's right, and they stayed in a house that was 3,500 square meters and was occupied by the richest family in the city of Ephesus at that time. 
And this is a fennel branch here. What is the story about this fennel branch? Well, the fennel branch, in the temple, they had fires, of course, and people would break a piece off of here, light it, and in that way, and it would burn for a long time, they would bring their fire home and light their own fires and candles or whatever they wanted to do. So it's a very unique branch. It's very light. It's hollow inside, but burns for the longest time. So how do you feel? They walked hand in hand down the street like this, and the crowds were yelling at them and waving at them. But I don't see any crowds yelling and waving at us. No, maybe next time. <laughs> The grand marble paved street leading from the harbor was restored by Emperor Arcadius late in the 4th century. It stretches 530 meters until it ends, appropriately enough, at the Grand Theater. This architectural masterpiece could seat 25,000 spectators. A high wall was built to protect the audience from the wild animals brought in to fight the gladiators. Jack, where are we standing? You know, this is in the old amphitheater of Ephesus. This is where Paul the Apostle preached almost 2,000 years ago the gospel of Jesus Christ. He would speak to 25,000 people at a time and everyone around here could clearly hear him. Even today, they have performances. Right here on this floor where you and I are standing, they don't need microphones. It still works without any problem. It is quite an incredible place. And how did they did it with the acoustics is beyond me. But what does it do to you? It gives me an incredible feeling to stand right here. If I can preach, this is the place I would stand and preach. When we return, it's back to the present with a stop in Heraklion, the modern capital of Crete. Then, we revisit the past at Knossos Palace. We will be back with more of the Travel Magazine just after this, so stay with us. Welcome back to the Travel Magazine and Crete, the Greek island that separates the Aegean from the Libyan Sea and marks the boundary between Europe and Africa. The island of Crete is surrounded by beaches and harbors. Its capital, Heraklion, has a population of about 125,000 and is the fifth largest in Greece. It was ruled at one time by the Minoans, considered to be one of the oldest civilizations in Europe. Jake, let's go and start and explore the city, the capital, Heraklion. Good idea, Mika. Crete is the largest of the Greek islands, located about 100 kilometers south of the mainland. Heraklion is situated in the middle of Crete's north coast, and with its international air and seaports, it is not surprising that the city is the island's tourism hub. Along with tourism, fishing and agriculture also support the local economy. As in Kusadasi, tourists from all over the world enjoy Heraklion's gorgeous beaches and warm, sunny climate. However, socializing on the beach and frolicking in the water are only a fraction of what this thriving capital has to offer. Mopeds are a popular mode of transportation, handy for negotiating the narrow streets. Whether you're traveling by moped or on foot, there's plenty here to keep you busy. Outdoor cafes offer more than just an ideal venue for people watching. You'll be tempted by tantalizing local treats. Wacky, metzi, fried cheese and fresh seafood. Speaking of food. You know, Jay, after all this walking, I'm really hungry. Well? You know what? When you are in Greece, this is what you should buy. Oh, what is this? 
Gyros, pita. Gyros, okay. Pita. Can we have two, please? Okay. Yes. Okay. This looks very good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. That looks good, good, Is that good. lamb? Uh, yes, lamb. That is what you eat when you come to Greece, eh? Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's it? That's it? No, 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 no. Oh, that looks good. It's the best. Excellent. Mmm. Excellent. Mika, I just hope you don't eat it like a herring. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. <laughs>After enjoying our decadent lunch, we are headed to the palace at Knossos, about five kilometers from the center of Heraklion. Knossos, built on the hill of Kefala, was one of four palaces central to Cretan civilization during the Minoan age. In 1900, the English archaeologist Arthur Evans started excavating the palace. His enthusiastic restoration introduced materials such as paint foreign to Minoan architecture, which has since generated criticism among academics. However, Evans is generally credited with the discovery of Minoan culture. Thanks to his efforts, today we can appreciate such ancient treasures as this colored relief of the prince with the lilies or priest king and these reconstructed jars, which were used to store oil and wine. There were originally 21 storage rooms in the palace, which is divided into a three-story west wing and a five-story east wing, each with a ground floor on the level of the central court. This was a wonderful experience today. But you know what? We're out of time. I hope you've enjoyed Kusadasi and Ephesus as much as we have. I'm Jake de Boer. And I'm Mieke de Boer. And join us again as we travel the world.